Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today in vlog number four, we're going to get to our electrical gremlins. 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 What's a gremlin? Remember in the last episode, we had to pull off because we lost a cylinder? And then all that crazy I was getting on the display of the camera, all that EMI interference-y stuff? Okay, so that has to be the spark plug wires. And Jack Shaheen wrote in and he had a really great suggestion. He said, find a really dark night, go ahead and start up the car, pop the boot here, and take a look inside. And he was absolutely right. So I did that, went ahead and started the car. I didn't see much until it warmed up, but once it did, it was all these like little thunderstorms going off in the distance down here. It was wild. I think there were maybe four or five separate places where the spark plug wires were shorting out. It's kind of crazy. So I have a brand new set of wires that we're going to install. And once we get that done and get the engine back up and running again, going to go ahead and warm it up and see if we can't get to those carburetors and get those things perfectly tuned and balanced and all that sort of stuff that we need to do. And then once again, if we have time, we'll try to get to the oil change as well. So all right, it's kind of a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't know if you've ever made this mistake, but years ago when I was swapping out spark plug wires on my Beetle, I got them all mixed up and the engine wasn't super happy. My gosh, does that cause a fuss. So let me show you an easy way that we can go ahead and pull the spark plug wires off and make sure we get them in the right spots when we put it all back together. The first thing I like to do is to pop the distributor cap here. We need that off anyways. But the reason is because we want to double check the position here. This is, this is a little notch down here in the distributor that we saw before, and this is pointing to that. So that says top dead cylinder number one-ish. We look really at our notch down here on the pulley to tell us for certain, but it's not really critical. All we really need is who are you pointing to? All right. Well, when we put our cap back on, it's this wire. So what I want to do is trace this wire on the top, coming out here to here. Then, as this wire goes back, we know it's going to cylinder number one. The one next to it is number two. So coming back as well, we see that this is number one here, and this is number two. So one, two, three, four. It's going to be pretty simple. Now we want to take a look at the inside of the cap here because this cap only goes on one way. It has a small notch on one side and um, sort of a missing, almost a missing notch. And this big notch here lines up with this little post that's sitting up, sitting up right here on the clip. So we know that cylinder number one is on the opposite side and just here. So if you get really confused by this ever, just take a picture of it. It's super easy. Just use your cell phone. Take a quick picture. I want to pull the caps up first and then work each wire out. Kind of go around in a circle and they should pull out like that. They can be a little tough to get out sometimes. There we go. Our coil wire out here. There we go. There. And then this last one. There we go. All right. All the wires out of our distributor cap. Pull the wire off the coil. Start with that. You want to get the boot off first because if you don't, there's a good chance. Oh, look at that. Look at that. See that? Oh, that is not good at all. All right, well, it looks like we're also going to be cleaning the inside of our coil. Hmm. What do you know? Yeah, it's pretty corroded. <laughs> it looks like crap. Okay, we'll clean that as well. Now, we want to pull our spark plugs off in groups. And the reason is because they've got these little rubber connectors and all this stuff on here. And we're going to have to refit the wires into these little rubber stays. So you want to pull those things off carefully. You don't want to break the back of them off. Just work it off gently. There we go. See, it has a ball, a little 
has a little ball guy on the end of it. You just don't want to snap those things off because we're going to reuse these. We'll pull our spark plug wires out. Oops. There we go. Just be careful pulling everything out. Kind of inspect our wires. Now, you know, they, they look fine. They really don't look that bad. But um, they were going off like crazy. So you, many times you just can't tell by looking at them. So this is the first set of wires on the left side of the car. This would be cylinders number three and four. Remember we had number three spark plug was super, super sooty and dirty. There's a very good chance that this is really the issue as to why is because our plug wires were so bad. But looking at them, I mean, you can go and inspect these things even pretty carefully and not see anything wrong with them. So really, um, you really want to go ahead and um, uh, replace these wires even if they don't look bad if you're seeing any of that arcing going on at night. So use Jack's little method. It works great. It really is pretty awesome and it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to watch back there and watch all those bright lights flashing all over the place. Okay, so this is our first set for the left side. Okay, there we go. So this is the longer set for the right side, cylinders one and two. Notice there's these little O-rings on here as well. They just sort of keep the wires together. So we're gonna have to refit those and refit this guy as well. Take a look at our rubber air caps here. Look how distorted that guy is. It's all kind of wanky. These really need to seal well over the holes in the tin that these things go into or you can get cooling issues. So they're kind of important. And I'm also noticing that this thing's pretty loose. Look at how easily that spins on the wire. With all our wires on our distributor cap, let's head back to the bench and refit all of these wires. Since we have so many things to do here, why don't we just start with the coil? It really doesn't matter where you start, but I think I just want to get this cleaned and get it out of the way. The inside of this thing, oh my gosh, it's just really dirty. Can you see all that? It's just all sorts of um, that just corrosion and stuff in there. I have a brass bit on the end of brass wire bit on the end of my Dremel, so I think that's what I'm going to use to clean this out. Holy cow. Oof, it's really bad. Use a little bit of compressed air to try and clean this out. But it looks a little bit cleaner in there, not, not awesome still. I think we're still going to go at it a little bit. I also have a soft brass bristle brush that I think will work. If you don't have a Dremel and don't want to use a Dremel, these things will work pretty well too. I don't want to use anything stronger than the actual connector material in there. So brass is just great. I love brass brushes. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I have some dedicated electronics cleaner. This stuff really does cut through the, exactly this sort of corrosion on these things. Just use a Q-tip to kind of swab it around in there. Maybe hit it again with our brass brush. Blow it out a little bit. Yep, I think that looks pretty good in there. A little hard to see in there, but I think we've got our corrosion all cleared up, so it looks pretty good in there, I think. When you're looking at your coil and sort of inspecting it, these things are filled with, with uh, dielectric, which is like a really thick oil. They're goopy, horrible inside. It'll be pretty darn obvious if they're leaking, and if they are, your coil is definitely shot. Um, so just doing a quick inspection on it, looking for any goop around the edges where it would be coming, around, coming out here, and this one looks fine. Well, we'll call that good for the coil and set that aside. Why not just start on the distributor cap while we're at it? Go ahead and get that done. I'm just going to clean it off pretty well. I don't want to use any type of harsh chemicals on this at all. This is just some, some diluted super green what I'm using on this. And a couple of reasons. One, we of course want it to look nice, but this is a high tension or a high voltage area. So if there's, if there's any type of crap that could contain water or any type of conductive whatever, they can actually short 
through here as well. So we just want to make sure that this thing's nice and clean. The conductors inside here for each one of the cylinders in here, spark plug wires, is see they look really good to me but I'm just going to hit them really quick with that uh, brass brush and my Dremel and just, just to brighten them up just a tad. Just a little bit of contact cleaner in each one of these. They look pretty clean anyways. I just want to give them a little, just a little bit of a wash. All right, we can blow them out. Our distributor cap looks great. It's all nice and clean on the inside and the outside. I think we're done with this. We'll go ahead and put it aside for now. Okay, on to the star of the show here. The one wire we don't have to fuss with, which is great, is the actual coil wire itself. Look at that. Isn't that, oh, that's so horrible. So we have a new one right here. So yay, great. We just don't have to worry about that. The best way to put these on is to make sure that the rubber cap here is pulled back so you can get an idea that it's going in all the way. Work it back and forth and back and forth until you feel it seat. You shouldn't see much metal at all here at the top should be seated all the way, then you can push your cap over the top. There we go. So that guy's all ready to go. Woohoo! So I talked to the owner about this and he wants me to use his original Baru style um, spark plug caps. These are Baru wires that I bought actually, but the caps are a little bit different on them. You can kind of see, let's see if I can kind of get a picture of it. So they're a little bit different. You can kind of see the profiles are different on them. I'm going to end up unscrewing these from the ends of the wire. So they just screw in. Now these Baru's are actually a little bit different. So they have a screw in, screw head inside of them and you take them apart, you stick the wire in and you lock them down. So it's going to be a little bit of a weird thing to sort of install these ends on. But let me go ahead and get started. The other thing I want to do is transfer over these new rubber gaskets here because this one, in fact, this one even has a hole in it. These are just old and tired and not going to, not going to work. So, um, all right, so let's do one and see, see how it comes out. So I'm going to pull these, these caps off the end of the new connectors here. Just kind of work them down. There we go. And then these can be unscrewed. There it goes. Boy, I really got to twist it. Got a new rubber booty on, much softer. It's really going to seal quite a bit better than our old tired one, which actually has a hole in it. So that's no good. Now, in order to get these off, they don't twist on. In fact, they feel kind of loose. There's a reason for that. Inside, you can use a screwdriver to pull these off and just loosen this plug up in here. There it is. It's just a little brass plug here with the, with the spring to catch the threads of the, the end of the spark plug. So you're kind of wondering, well, what's going on here? Well, obviously the wire's now going to be able to come out just easily. And so what they did was they, it looks like, oh, and it looks like they tinned it as well. That's a good idea. I might do that as well. So they cut the wire back a little ways and then tin the very end, pushed it up in there, and then you screw your plug back in and you're good to go. At this point, let's just take a look at our wires. We need to add the two little rubber gaskets here and this guy as well. So we'll have to put them on from this end. Let's go and take these guys off. If I remember correctly, when this was sitting in the shroud on the engine, the top one was cylinder number one or the longer wire of the two. So I'm going to put it back together that way. So let's see, we need to put our two O-rings on first because they need to go on ahead of it. And we'll find which one is the longest here. Looks like it's going to be this one. And I'm going to put that one in on the top here. And then the other one, as it comes through, goes on the bottom one. While our soldering iron is warming up, this thing is old as the hills, um, I'll go ahead and strip this back just a tad. 
So we have something to work with. This isn't like regular wire. It's got a heck of a center core on it, which makes sense. There we go. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's go ahead and tin these. Okay, there you go. All right. So pretty much the plan with this is that you stick the wire inside here until it goes all the way through and you can kind of see it through the other end and then you put your plug in and just run it down. And the end of it is sort of, you see how it's, 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 it's conically shaped like that? It should in theory grab hold of the wire and lock it in. Let's see how that works. There we go. How's that feel? Actually, it feels really good. Quite a bit better than it did before. And our next one. To me, this is kind of the fun of an older car. This sort of interesting older tech on the car. I, I love that sort of stuff. How did they do it? What did they do it like that for? And then nine times out of ten, they it seems kind of convoluted, but it's like all these beautiful brass parts and stuff that was machined instead of just something that was clamped together at a factory and heated up until it all melted together kind of thing. It's, these are serviceable. You can use these. You can just go out. You can really just go out and buy wire if you wanted to and clamp on your own connectors and stuff. Whatever you want to do. But these are totally serviceable wires. All right. Well, there we go. This is the left side set. Let's go ahead and do the right side set. Set these guys aside, they're all ready to rock and roll. Yay, these are our shorter ones. This is really just the same process, so I'll just go ahead and go through it. As I was working through the second set of wires, I came across something kind of interesting with one of the spark plug caps. It's actually a resistor cap. It's completely different than the other three. Very strange, I didn't expect that at all. This little guy is the resistor that was inside there. And look at the end of it's all chewed up as well. It seems funny that one single plug would have a resistor and the other three wouldn't. That just doesn't make any sense to me anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with some just solid copper wire. It's basically the same. It's pretty much the same diameter. So this should work great actually. I need to know about how long it is, but I don't, there's a spring here as well, so I don't have to be too exact. I'll just kind of cut it to length. The, the trick is going to be to get the end of it nice and straight and flat and all that. Let's say we could compress that spring down to about here. Oops. Okay, so we're going to do our plug first this time, then the spring. So now for the real test, we'll go ahead and throw our meter on it, make sure we've got continuity all the way through it. Yep. Okay, great. Killer. Okay, zero. Check this one again. Killer. Okay. Looks like our short wire set is working just great. There we go. That one's good. All right. Yay. All right. So that was a pretty massive fuss, but we've got our wires all back. We've got the original bruise. We've got our new rubber gaskets on there. We're all back together. We've got our little spacers all ready to go. Now, why don't we go ahead while we're here, why don't we just go ahead and put them on top of the distributor cap and that'll just save us one more step to do in the car. Need to find cylinder number one. Cylinder number one is on the opposite side of our notch. So it sits in the car like this. This one's cylinder number one, two, three, and four. One we said would be the longest of the long wires. That's this one. So the one next to it is number two. So one goes in here. Make sure it seats all the way. Two goes in here. 
All right, all the way down. Good. On the other side, we have our longest is going to be number three and our shortest is going to be number four. I think we're all set here. I think I got them in the right order. I'm not going to push these little caps down on the top until I'm super positive of that, but I think, I'm, I think it's right. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get back to the car, go ahead and install it, and um, we should be good to go. Everything's just going to go back in kind of in reverse order, so I'm going to put the coil back in first so that it's out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and route our spark plug wires. Well, we got our plug wires back on. It was a little more of a fuss than I thought it would be, but I think it's going to work pretty well. I wanna go ahead and start the car and make sure that they're all hooked up properly. I was watching a Sarah and Tuned episode just a little bit ago where she had done the timing belts on her car and there she was. She had to turn the key to start the car. That is, can be the most gut-wrenching, ah, just few seconds waiting for the engine to catch and fire and run properly. Same sort of feeling with this. I hate it when I get spark plug wires mixed up or something. So we'll see how this goes. Here we go. Oh, that sounds good. Well, I'd say we obviously got them hooked up right. That's great. Sounds nice and smooth. Just listening to it, it probably could use a tune. We got our new spark plug wires built and installed. I think the engine's running pretty well at this point. We still need to get to the carburetors. I want to do a final tune and then balance them left to right, but I'm sorry, kind of out of time for this episode. I also didn't get to the uh, oil change either, but there's going to be lots more episodes coming up, so please stay tuned for all of those. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.